Hello and welcome to my show, Conversation with Priya. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining it. Today is our, I have a very special guest, not um, business, it's beyond business and very personal and it's very close to my heart. And this particular initiative, I have really great respect for that. Mr. Rocket Rod Miller Help me to welcome today. Hello, uh, Rod. Welcome to my show, Conversation with Priya. How are you today? Oh, I'm good, Priya. Thank you for the invitation. It's just such a, uh, a good little uh, podcast you've got. I'm impressed. Pleasure. I thought there should be something different now because I've been talking business a lot. I know you are running a business, but... <laughs> At the same time, it's very, very personal. So you are touching so many people's personal life through this. And this is, your your business name is very interesting. It calls Flexibility Science, right? Flexibility Whisperer, that's me. Whisperer, right. Yes. So you, and when people are trying to make noise, you are actually whispering, very interesting angle. Um, so Super tell common. me something about, like, how did it started? I'm... You were from military background, right? So, well, that's right. Yes, I was uh, in the uh, special forces in the in the commandos, and uh, unfortunately, I had a, a knee operation that didn't didn't pan out. So, I had to leave special forces. But um, and I was also teaching kung fu at the school I belonged to. Now, wow. unfortunately, that I had to stop fighting in the ring. It's kind of like kickboxing. So I thought, well, what am I going? Uh, uh, um, what am I going to study exercise science? So I went and did that. And I kind of had a bit of a, a thing for for stretching because that was the only reason, the only time I ever got injured was from stretching in, injuries. So I thought, well, let's really look into this. And that's what I started doing. And I started finding all these mechanisms about the body that just no one was using, no style of stretching was using, nothing, nothing was there. So I had a whole school of students that I could practice on. Right. <laughs> and... And so I started playing around with all, all these different mechanisms and I was getting phenomenal results for, for a lot of the students and also a couple of close friends who ended up winning the Australian Kung Fu title for their weight division. So then I, I really started playing around and I was getting people, you know, uh, uh, getting even, even people that are just on the street, they, some people that have never touched their toes. Right. And I'll get them to do it in 60 seconds. And people sort of don't believe it, but then they try it. It's like, oh, my God, seriously. And it's different mechanisms like reciprocal inhibition, contract, contractile velocity, all these different um, terms that no one really knows anything about, but really make, a, a, it really makes such a difference for right. training, but also improving their abilities, not just in flexibility, but including hmm. strength and power at the end hmm. of the motion. So, yeah, that's what uh, where it all started quite a few years ago now. Right. And um, you studied the flexibility science um, to perfect this yeah. art. Yeah, well, I studied exercise science and uh, that was, um, and then I started developing, you know, just general health programs and that uh, for the um, for the school uh, training mm -hmm. programs. And I, I did a few other bits and pieces, but then life kind of takes you in different directions. So I never really sort of, capitalized on it or wrote a book about it or anything um and till about four years ago when i actually had a serious shoulder injury now i'm dealing with some of the top sports physios in the country right at, and i started discussing the system and they had no idea about it and these are the top seriously i, I know right it's just like whoa how, how can you not know i mean i found and developed this system i didn't find it i developed it years ago right oh well you know, someone surely would have found it by now. But then I looked online and there's nothing like there. And I went, wow. So that's when I started showing different people. And, and uh, you know, hot, hot people who are high qualifications that I've got, they're saying, no, nah, that's rubbish. That's that's just this or that. I went, oh, actually, no, it's not. And you kind of ignore hmm. all these benefits that I've been able to find. So I had to do a case study. And that took 18 months and about 37 different drafts to get it right, and then we submitted it, and we were accepted uh, straight away. We didn't have to make any changes or anything. So uh, it passed all the, the peer uh, review and um, published. So now I'm going to capitalise on that, and I'm just building and building and building different clientele and the business uh, uh, 
you know, along those lines to this will really change how people train. Mm. It has a huge scope as we were talking, you know, offline. Mm -hmm. um, I believe like, you know, we, every child has the flexibility and slowly we start losing it. And there is a reason behind and medical reason behind it. And obviously there's so much to blame us. Uh, to be honest, you know, we have less physical activities nowadays, especially people who move towards more white collar business, I was thinking, but now you are telling me that sports people are also struggling. So it's been a bit surprised. I was always thinking that, you know, being in a white collar business, the flexibility goes away because as you are always sitting down, you know, that makes a lot of difference. Absolutely. The, yeah. Um... One of the things that, uh, you know, more and more research has found is the, the fascia. Now, one of the reasons why we're a bit stiffer in the morning is what what uh, when we get down, right down into the fascia, there's these little fascia balls that run around the lines of fascia and they stick the um, the, the muscle fibres together, kind of like right. uh, Velcro. Right. Now, when we don't move, like when we're sleeping, these guys get run around and tighten everything up. And that's just a continual process. So that's why we're in the morning, but we're a bit stiffer because we, we now need to break these bonds. And by the time in the afternoon, you're a lot more flexible just because you've broken these little bonds that these little guys work on. Now, if you don't do any stretching, these guys get, you know, it gets more intense and more intense. And so instead of just like a little bit of Velcro, it's like super stuck Velcro. Right. So, yeah, that's that's one of the things. And people that are super flexible, like they call hypermobile, they're saying that it's not just the elasticity that they've got or elastin more than in other people, but they're saying they may have less um, of these things called fibroblasts uh, than, than other people. So, right. yeah, that's right. why we get a little bit stiff in the morning. And if we don't use it, we lose it, as they say. Right. Right. And uh, as we were talking about, like people think people think that you studio yogas are going to make a lot of change in their life, but that doesn't bring much of a flexibility, does it? Well, well any sort of yoga, uh, well, sorry, any sort of stretching does some form of uh, uh, improvement. But where the problem with a lot of uh, whether it's yoga or anything else is they do a form of static stretching or mm. like stretch and hold. Now, when you look at the research behind the effects of that uh, that uh, type of stretching, it's actually quite dramatic. In um, mm. uh, or, or, or and because what they're showing is that if you do that type of stretching for any sort of performance. Um, or any sort of physical activity, your activity or performance is worse. Hmm. So why does that happen? And some hmm. people say, well, it relaxes the muscle too much. And you say, no, it's nothing to do with that at all. Hmm. One of the problems is that it creates conflict in the muscle. Because what happens is every muscle uh, has, uh, before it's been used or whatever, has what's known as the stretch barrier. Now, that's the limit the muscle can go prior right to the stretch reflex happen, uh, occurring, right? Now, what happens there is if you're doing a static stretch, you know, everyone's ambitious, so they try and push it a little bit more, but that pushing then causes the problem because what happens if you're trying to stretch your muscle mm. and the muscle's going too far, what happens is the sensors in the muscle will, will go to the spinal cord. The spinal cord doesn't tell the brain. It just sends a signal back to the muscle, contracts right. and stop the stretch. Right. Our egos or our ambitions are going, oh, I can handle it, no pain, no gain, you know. Mm -hmm. By that, you're creating a tug of war in the muscle and you're confusing the neuromuscular link to the muscle. And I think that could be probably a much stronger explanation why our performances are worse after doing static stretching. So, yeah, it's something that um, not many people know. And static stretching or stretch and hold is probably the world's number one form of stretching or in many cases, the only form of stretching that they know, and it's often painful. So people sort of go, oh, I don't want to do stretching. It's just painful. And it's like, well, mm. how many forms of stretching mm. do you know? Mm. you know? And I, as I, as we, like, we understand that is, you know, if when it comes to this flexibility and stretching, um, it should be very carefully done. You're not just going to create a oh. bad memory. You're going to actually tear up your muscles for life. Uh, you know, the neurons can be more 
problematic in going forward or you might be scared the psychological impact is long lasting some some people they say no i tried last time didn't work out or uh, it was very painful yeah, so yeah. responsibility goes to the instructors at the same time there has to be oh exactly exactly so um but how many you've got to ask how many different forms of stretching does the instructor know and what's their background with it um so there's and there's, there's 15 different types of stretching out there but they yeah. come up the four different categories so you've got non-movement so like that static stretching i mentioned before you've got movement um probably the most common one for that would be dynamic then you've got pressure and you might see people doing foam rolls but even technically a massage is also uh would be it stretches the muscle a little bit and then you've got contractile now, contractile is the system that I, I've developed from, uh, there's, there's PNF, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And they say that is the most uh, advanced form of stretching, but it's actually 80 years old when it was first developed. And nothing has really gone further than, um, than that in that area. So that's when I started using it. So I'm contracting the muscles on both sides of the joint and just the contraction improves the strength and the signal and the control. And mm. so by doing that, you become more aware of the muscle as you're using it and as you develop it. And that's that's a really significant thing. The more you, we understand and connect with our body, the better it performs. Right, right. So in that case, we will be like uh, considering more, more organized a way of bringing this whole exercise especially in the childhood and you know later stages of the high school and of course when you are doing the sports training you know the, it has to be more organized in different ways and different forms uh, would you believe in that absolutely like we're in we've got so many different programs in the process of either developing or uh you know or ha have plans to develop and that includes putting it together a program for schools to train and understand the system, but also to understand flexibility as a whole hmm. um, and how it affects, uh, how it can massively improve our performance. And But most importantly, and this is something that we, we, we tend to forget, is that our posture is so critical to have correct. And we've seen we've forgotten it. I, I sort of grew up in the 60s, but my parents hmm. were the, the, the great generation. They were born in the 20s. So I was always told to sit up straight, you know. That kind mm. of doesn't really happen much anymore. And no one really understands the, how, how, how drastic the effect of uh, bad posture, how long-term it affects us. And I mm. believe it actually all starts with the, the muscles of, of the, between the spine and the leg called the hip flexors. And mm. what, what occurs there is that muscle there, because it's always short, and we never really stretch it except probably since we've left school. It then hmm. starts, our upper body starts creeping forward and we've got a little bit of a bend in our, in our back, you know, or hmm. lean forward. Now, the problem with that is when we stand straight, we're just balancing like that. But when we lean forward, we, we're actually now making the hamstrings working because it's trying to straighten us up all the time. Yeah. And if muscle working all the time, we get shorter. But also mm. that affects the back and the neck. So it's no mm. wonder why so many people have backache and neck ache because the muscle's working all the time to try and straighten you up. Yeah. And carrying around a five or 10 kilo weight all day long and then putting it down and wondering why your bicep is sore. Mm. So mm. one of the things that priorities that I have within training anyone is where where are you on the posture scale? How much is it affected, and how how bad can uh, and, and and what do we need to improve it? Because if yeah. you, um, if you look at as we age, there's um, there's a study done. I think it was like forty percent of people, and this really affects a lot of women as well, over the age of sixty have what's known as hyperkyphosis, and that's where you get that that wow. in the back. And that is, I mean, like I said, the muscles are working all day long to try and straighten you up, and we're not aware mm -hmm. of it. But that then gets worse, and by the time we hit 80, they say up to 55% of people have this problem. And so 
it really needs to be addressed. We really need to understand hmm. how important our posture is because long term, you know, if you're bending over all the time, you lose your balance quite easy as you age, and that's where broken hips happen and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of a good idea to be, in, as we age particularly, to be in touch with our body and not to ignore our body and go, oh, I don't need to do things like that. Well, Right, right. No, and I, I always, um, you know, think is that if you are, forget about for 60 ever, but people these days, 40, 30 or ever, we started oh. feeling the problems, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Like you were saying that you tried doing in the market and, you know, there were a lot of younger people also not able to actually touch their toes even, so. <laughs> there's, well, there's, there's, even re, uh, there's even websites up saying that, uh, you know, how stretching is bad for you, or it's not good for you, it doesn't improve anything. And if you look at a lot of the traditional methods of stretching, I kind of agree. Um, mm. The uh, I, there's even um, uh, I know uh, uh, footballers, young footballers, and, and young sports people, and I even had a, a, a um, an Aussie rules player. She couldn't get much past her knees, and other, right. and other people, and that's just asking for trouble because if you mm. don't have that range of motion, you mm. then when that muscle gets tight and the stretch reflex kicks in, that if you really put a lot of intense on it, it will tear. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, you, you're highly vulnerable to muscle tears, and then that just causes more problems down the line as well. Because how long are you out for just to um, just to uh, repair that muscle tear? You know, and if you're a professional, that's, that's right. your career. That's your end. So, and once mm. you have a tear, it, it can easily occur again. It's, it, you don't do anything about it. So that's why not only is stretching or flexibility training important then we've got to look at the right sort of flexibility training for you. Right. And in corporate, like people say, every two hours you should get up and, you know, move around a bit. And But how many people are practicing actually just moving around? Forget about this the stretching and all those things. Like just moving around. The people are sitting uh, hours and hours, especially, I mean, I'm from IT background and I've seen right. people sitting in front of computer all the time. You know, yeah. all the time, and they they think they they're gonna get up, and then sometimes they go and drink the coffee, and it's just still sitting there, and they're focusing all the time on the computer because they want to complete, understand their passion and focus. But at the same time, it's very dangerous, you know, um, for people to so so. What's your program around you know helping those people who are actually not able to consciously act on it? Well, it's it's just you. One of the things that we've got to do is um, just remember that we've got a body and we have a body for a reason. Otherwise, we'd just be a you know a head on a plaque or on a plate. We've got a body and it's it will it will help us or it'll hurt us if you ignore it and you don't look after it. You eat the wrong foods. It will remind you in a very disastrous way from either disease or just from injury or that sort of thing. If you do not look after your body. It's 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 a, you've got it for a reason, and you've got it for eighty or hundred years or however long. So it, it, it makes sense to look after it. The hard thing is, is that we get in our we get in the habits of our lives that we don't include that, we don't make it a priority until something happens. Like I know hmm. that they need they had to have a heart attack before they actually started looking after themselves. Yeah. So that's Bad. the fact that that has to happen. Yeah. Um, so we need to first start looking at what, what do we need and then you don't have to go do training and exercise you can go and do cl dance classes you could do yoga classes if you wanted to do it. it's about just being active and getting your muscles moving into areas that you don't normally do so that trains and improves the connection between your mind and your body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you have any particular program for corporates to actually help them and their employees in that sense? Well, one of the, the favourite stretches that I have is like I, I, I prefer partner stretching because when you're doing it with a partner, you, you can actually achieve a little bit more than if you're doing it on your own. But you need to learn the skill. This is like if you went to a gym that did no, no idea about weight training and then you started doing weights, chances are you're not going to be doing it correctly. So hmm. learning about how to do these activities is probably the higher priority. I mean, you don't go 
to a dance class thinking you're going to be the expert dancer straight away, you're going to learn gradually. Hmm. Like with my system, it has a, a seven level of seven levels of progression. Um, right. You want to start off easy and you want to build the connections through your body first because if you put too much load on a body that's not ready, hmm. I mean, that's how things break. So we want to build the load uh, gradually and then open everything up and then just performances and whatnot just increase. So for corporates, uh, at the moment, we don't have a, a corporate training package, but we are definitely in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the works for doing, whether it's a video training package or whether I even visit um, and run people through certain stretches there, you know. Um, yeah. I've done workshops for even martial arts uh, clubs and uh, I can do up to like 20 people. Uh, mm. So I teach them a little bit about how flexibility is and the science of it, but not in a way you can't understand. I sort of break down all the big words and put them into words that we know and we, we can relate to and understand. You know, I don't like showing off how many big words I can say. I prefer using uh, technology or using knowledge and words that people relate to and then hmm. go there, you know, because otherwise you're not going to remember it and make it fun. Interesting. You know, we, <laughs> and ways, I would like to know uh, where do you want to see yourself? Like where do you think this like, flexibility whispers are going to go in the next three to five years' time? I honestly feel um, that uh, America is calling because uh, one of the, the challenges in Australia is um, just the amount of resources that um, we, we, we have as opposed to, say, America. And we still are fairly conservative. Like I've had some clashes early on with people saying, oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going, oh, well, that's why I did a case study to prove that my system hmm. does and Americans can be a little bit more open-minded to new ideas, particularly, you know, if I can show you even just the average 10% improvement in power for a sports person, that's money in the bank. You know? Yeah. And as, as, you know, as well as all the other people that are, are, um, uh, can enjoy and, and get into um, flexibility training, and but in a good way, you know, and an enjoyable way, because my number one rule when it comes to any sort of training, particularly to do with stretching, never, ever, ever let yourself feel pain. If you feel pain, stop. That's a signal something is wrong or you're just pushing it too hard. And use right. it, you don't. Now, discomfort is not pain. So, you, you know, discomfort is where your muscles are moving and, and adjusting to deal with it. But when you get the pain, stop. And, oh. uh, you know, I, when I train people, a lot of them don't even sweat. But then they come away and they just feel like it's a far better than a massage because I've released all the tenseness in their body. It's gone. And um, that is, uh, you know, people float away. <laughs> when, when I'm finished with them, they're like, oh, this is so good. Uh, I, right. I, I just yeah. I love training and helping people. You know? Yeah, and, that's, um, that's amazing to see. And you are very passionate about it. I'm sure, you know, the world is, the, I remember Gandhi a long, long time ago, he mm -hmm. talked about Global Village. We are living in Global Village and mm -hmm. COVID made it more possible for acceptance in the universal world. So mm -hmm. I'm very proud where we are heading, you know, as, as a humanity. And we do need to make sure that we are protecting not, not just our, you know, because the way you become, your future generation adopt to that genetics as well. So you are impacting the future. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you it is gonna make a lot of difference in people's mind. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say in last word to you know as, as a two cents to my audience where they will start if they want to start their flexibility journey? Well, keep in touch on the flexibility whisperer.com.au, uh, just Google flexibility whisperer, and there's a little bit of information on there, or you can email me if you've got any questions. Um, I have started training people online, um, but it's it's more of right now I'm, as I'm building the business. I'm, I'm more likely trying to get a, 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 I'm discussing now with people who are, want to come in as a partner into the business that can manage and, and uh, do the admin and operations side of it. That way it allows me, like they, they're the manager while I'm the guitar and the singer <laughs> and 
the lead guitar player. I'm not playing the drums or organising the, the next venue, you know, that sort of thing. So it allows me to, to get a lot further out there. And then also looking at uh, some investment to produce all the training videos that we can then put online. Uh, that That's huge because then I can train people, you know, show them, like, like watching a, a video on how to do weight training, you're learning the exact technique, the way to do it, and you're learning it if you're going to do it on your own or if you're going to do it with a partner. And like I say, if you do it with a partner, I, I find a little bit more effective. Uh, and then also then we'll be doing uh, um, uh, instructor courses for people that, uh, you know, really want to get involved in this. And I've also got, I've got an osteopath that I'm, he actually, I, show, I taught him online how to use this system and he's getting phenomenal results from a lot of his right. clients. So we're looking at packaging a, a training program for osteopaths continuing education and then, you know, looking at also exercise uh, physiologists. I think. It's nice when they come to your train one of them again. And so we're talking about putting together a package for ESSO, which is the Exercise yeah. Science and, uh, uh, Association. So there's so many, there's lots of different options and it's uh, just going to build and build and build. And there's, there's nothing in the world like it. So it's kind of nice to have developed something, you know, right here in Australia and it, has, it can have such a big impact. Yeah, and it is a powerful way of actually, you know, educating these days. And I mean, just a start, don't think. I believe that, you know, if you keep thinking, keep planning, it never happens. Better if you want to do tomorrow, do it today, now. Like you know? And so, you know, if, because if you say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this and after this, I'm going to do that, it never happens. No. So when I really want to do something, I said, I'm, you know what, I'm going to do it now. Like, even if it is a little bit. And it just builds up from there. So I would like to say, everybody, if you really want to go and save yourself in your old age, you know, sleeping on the bed, please help yourself. Not for us, not for your girlfriend or a boyfriend or a mom and dad, just for yourself. Do it for yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. We need to, when we train and do all that sort of stuff, the body also releases lots of different uh, hormones that actually help repair and build and actually even... There's the feel-good hormone uh, of um, what they call endocannabinoids. And yes, it is the same uh, receptors on our body, the can cannabinoid, as, as, as if you're having a smoke. Um, but uh, what it does is the body releases it and you actually get that little floaty feeling. I've got one client, like we probably have to stop about five times because he's a little bit spacey, you know. He's got too much going on in his body. Oh, let's just go for a walk, mate. It only lasts yeah. like 30 seconds to a couple of minutes, but you do feel that. Just you feel like, good about it. Yes. Really, yeah. You know, like, you know, and it, it's a feeling of achievement. So do it for that. And all the details will be given down um, below in description. Don't forget to reach out. Feel free to ask your question in the comment. And I'm sure uh, Rod will jump in and answer those questions. And, um, right. you know, we will, he will, is available on social media, especially on LinkedIn and Facebook. And of course, if you can see his website, he's very actively updating it. So don't forget to actually communicate and start something today, not tomorrow, today. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for joining in, uh, Rod. This, is, this was an interesting communication and I'm sure the audience will get a lot of value out of it. Thank oh, you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.